Hi, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of Wildlife Wednesday. We are streaming live on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook today. So thanks for taking the time out of your day to join us and to learn all about some foxes. If you have any questions or comments as we move along throughout the episode, please feel free to put them in the chat uh, located at the side of your screen there. And hopefully we'll be able to answer some of them at the end of the episode. And if not, maybe we can um, answer them as we go along or in the comments section. So my name is Jessica Curry, and I'm a specialist of science, knowledge, and innovation at WWF Canada. I'm currently based in New Brunswick within the Wolostook or St. John River watershed. And I've been working with WWF Canada for over five years now, seems like a long time. Um, and I primarily do research and data analysis. So I really work with numbers and dig into national trends on biodiversity and conservation approaches. But I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about foxes. And I think we can all agree on one thing, that they are very, very cute. But how much do you actually know about them? So I work with numbers, so the details of species are often lost on me. Though based on my hair coloring, I'd like to think that I would make a really good red fox, I think. Um, but thankfully, we have our species expert, Emily Giles, here to help us out and to teach us a couple of fun things today. Hi, Emily, thanks for joining. Hi, Jessica, I'm very happy to be here today. Um, so for the, those of you that don't know me, my name is Emily Giles and I'm a conservation biologist here at WWF. So I actually have the pleasure of working on the same team as Jessica. Uh, I'm a senior specialist on our science knowledge and innovation team. And like Jessica, I work on conservation issues related to biodiversity, species at risk, and climate change. Um, so I'm based in a small town called Perth, Ontario, which is just outside of Ottawa. Uh, and I've been at WWF for about 15 years now. So um, I'm a huge wildlife lover. So one of my favorite aspects of my job is talking about animals and, and you know, having sessions like this where we get to answer questions. Uh, and hopefully try and help people to understand and appreciate wildlife and then in turn take steps to try and help protect them. So I am super excited to talk about foxes. Um, I have actually had the pleasure of working with foxes in uh, previous jobs before I came to WWF. I used to do a lot of work hands-on with, with wildlife before I came to WWF. I worked uh, in a couple of, of zoos. I worked at a wildlife rehab center. Um, so actually in, in one of my jobs, I had the pleasure of, of bottle feeding fox kits when they were young, which was a very adorable. incredible thing to do since they are so cute, <laughs> so absolutely adorable. Um, and I think the reason so many people really like foxes is because they are such an incredibly playful and fun animal and they're, they're really, really curious. So they, they kind of like to, uh, interact a little bit with, with people, which is why we're kind of naturally drawn to them. But the thing that, um, I think I find the most interesting about, about foxes is just how incredibly resourceful and intelligent they are. Um, that's why they sometimes have that reputation of being, you know, cunning, or you've heard, probably heard the, the term sly as a fox. Um, and I think that is particularly true for the red fox, which we, we just saw on camera there. Um, his red foxes um, are incredibly resilient and, and are found all over the world actually they're found in huge variety of habitats and they've virtually adapted to all types of situations and habitats even so much they are found in major urban centers uh, my mom lives in london ontario she had um, red fox uh, that had a family of kits uh, under their shed in the backyard didn't have very much fear of them so yeah we see them we see them all over the place fun i actually when we first moved into our house there was a little fox we just saw um the tail end of it kind of going into the woods one day so oh, uh, cute <laughs> always fun when you see some wildlife Definitely. um but it seems based on the intro that there are multiple foxes in canada can you tell us a little bit about them yeah, definitely. So here in Canada, we have four different types of foxes. I've already talked a little bit about the red fox, which can be found all over the world. Um, but in Canada, we also have the swift fox, the gray fox, and the arctic fox. So the red fox is the largest of those four in Canada, uh, and it weighs up to six and a half kilograms, which is the size of a about a small dog. Um, and just as I mentioned, they've been found, they've 
they are found all over the world. They're also our most widespread fox species, and they can be found right across the country. Um, the only places where they're not found is, is in the high Arctic and um, some of the islands off of, of coastal British Columbia. But otherwise, they're here in every province and territory, and they're the most widespread land mammal in the entire world other than humans. Oh. So they're, they're everywhere. Um, for a long time, red foxes were, were more common in kind of the, the rural and farming areas. But uh, increasingly, as I mentioned, they are becoming more common in urban areas. And they're, they're even uh, less common now uh, in some places in, in rural areas. Then we've got uh, the smallest fox species. I talked about the largest, then we've got the smallest. Oh, there it is on screen there. That's the swift fox. It's a, also a beautiful fox. Um, it's very small. It weighs on average about two to three kilograms. So that's, that's about the size of a domestic cat, not very big at all. Um, and the interesting thing about the swift fox is that they were actually wiped out from Canada. They were what we call extirpated or locally extinct. Um, they were officially designated as, as extirpated in 1970, but it's thought that they likely disappeared in, in the 1930s. But it was reintroduced back into, into Canada, um, and it can now be found in a small area of, of prairie grasslands just in the southern Alberta and, and southern Saskatchewan. The swift fox actually looks so comical with its its nose and everything. Um, but what other animals would be related to a fox? It, they kind of look a bit cat-like to me. Yeah, so that, that's interesting that um, you say cat-like because they're actually in the dog family. So when I see them, they, oh. they remind me a lot of, of my own pet dog, my domestic dog. Um, so they're in that same family, the, the family which we call Canidae or the, the dog family or canine family. Um, so yeah, when, when I see the foxes leaping and jumping and hunting, they actually do that in the exact same way that my dog does. So I can see a lot of, of resemblances there between, between the dogs. Awesome. That's why we have you as our species expert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks for that introduction, Emily. I do have a couple of extra questions for you. Um, so first things first, start with the basics. I heard that foxes are carnivores. So is that true? And if so, what do they eat? So it's true that they are expert hunters um, and they do like to, to feed on um, a diverse, a diverse uh, menu of, of different small animals. So they'll, they'll hunt pretty much anything um, from, you know, rodents uh, like lemmings and um, mice, as well as rat, rabbits and hares. Um, but they'll also eat birds, frogs, earthworms. Um, so the bulk of their diet is meat, but they're actually omnivores. So they'll dine on, on berries and fruit too. So um, actually I remember one of the, the red foxes that I worked with at the zoo loved blueberries. That was uh, Todd the fox's favorite, favorite food, just like my dog also loves blueberries. So again, a similarity there between foxes and domestic dogs. First of all, Todd is a great <laughs> name for a fox. And I also love blueberries. So I'm really keeping this theme of potentially me being a red fox alive. <laughs> You're also very intelligent like a fox, I will say, Jessica. Oh, thank That's you. Someone that works with you. Yes. <laughs> compliments. Keep complimenting <laughs> me. It's great. Um, all right. So question number two. In your intro, you kind of mentioned kind of that habitat distribution or uh, the size of the distribution for the swift fox and the red fox. But what about the arctic and the gray fox? Yes, good point. We didn't get into those two species yet. So um, the arctic fox is, is also a, a smaller fox. Oh, there we go. We've got another great photo of it there um, in its winter wonderland. So that photo there um, was an arctic fox of course, with its winter fur, which is white. Um, but Arctic foxes in the summertime change their coloration to a dark brownish color. Um, so that changing their, their coat color in the season really helps it to camouflage with its surrounding. And as their name suggests, they, of course, they can be found in the Arctic. Um, they're typically restricted to the, the tundra and northern coasts. And then the gray fox is uh, similar in size to the red fox, although they're they're slimmer and they have um, a black stripe on their tail and a black dipped tail. Um, so I like to think of like, oh yeah, there we go. You can see it's black tail, black dipped tail in the photos there. They also have kind of more of like um, what I think of as a pushed in or a shorter snout on the gray fox. Um, so they've got quite a different facial structure than the red fox, um, as well as they have shorter legs. Um, 
they're only found in a few isolated populations in uh, southern Manitoba and southern Ontario. Um, but the gray fox is still quite common in the U.S. And they prefer to inhabit deciduous forests um, and marshes. And we, we saw that picture there, too, of the swift fox or the gray fox in the tree. They're actually the only species of fox that can climb trees, which is oh, cool. pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, they are considered a species at risk. Um, they are a threatened species, just, just like the swift fox. Um, they are considered to be in, um, at risk of extinction, which is some bad news. Definitely. And I've only ever seen the red fox, that one and only encounter. But I suppose based on these habitat descriptions, that kind of makes sense because the other three are in New Brunswick. So good to know. <laughs> um, so we've got the red fox a white fox, which is the Arctic fox, a gray fox, and what color is the swift fox? Oh yes, good question. Um, so swift fox is a lighter coloration than the red fox. They've, they've got a more pale coat. It's more of like a pale orangish red. Um, and they also have a thick gray stripe down their back. So they can kind of have more of um, a slightly, slightly kind of grizzled appearance. Um, but unlike the other ones, their name comes from like swift fox comes from the fact that they're such a fast fox. They can run wow. really fast. They can run actually up to 60 kilometers per hour, wow. um, which is, you know, the same speed that cars can go on your average residential street or urban street. So um, swift fox is a great name for them. But very swift. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number three. Uh, so on related to the swift fox. You did mention that they were extirpated in Canada in the 70s. So what that would mean is that they're not found in Canada anymore. Um, but since it's come back and it kind of occupies this small area. So can you tell us maybe a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, this is a conservation story that we, we have shared a few times at WWF, including in our Living Planet report. Um, swift foxes were historically common and very widely distributed in the prairies, but by the 1930s, a lot of their grassland habitat had been converted to, to agriculture, um, and people also used to target them. They were a part of um, predator control programs, so we, we lost a lot of swift foxes because of that. So, as I mentioned, by about the 1930s, nobody had seen them anymore in Canada, but it wasn't until 1970 that they did receive that official designation of being extirpated or no longer no longer living in Canada. Um, but the good news is they are actually one of the most successful uh, reintroduction stories that we have in Canada. So foxes in the US were bred in captivity and then the, the young kits were reintroduced back into the Canadian prairies. So today, um, there are, you know, there's a few small populations left in the wild, but they are actually still considered at risk. So we've got some good news there, but the bad news is that they are still actually considered to be a threatened species. So their preferred habitat is prairie grasslands. And uh, many of, of Canada's native prairie grasslands um, have disappeared. So the protection, the restoration of those grasslands is really, really important uh, to the survival of the swift fox and, and um, also all the other species that depend on that, that grassland habitat. So it's a win-win if we protect and, and restore habitat, we'll, we'll help species like the fox, like the swift fox. That's so interesting. So sounds like we were definitely part of the problem, but we can also be part of the solution. So it's kind of nice. I like that. <laughs> all right. Last question for you. Uh, we get this question a lot at WWF. It's kind of like, why does this individual species matter? So why are foxes important and what benefits do they actually provide? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. Um, and, you know, when I think about foxes, I don't just think about the, the foxes here in Canada, but, but foxes around the world. So um, some species of foxes are considered what we call a keystone species. Um, and that means that they help to keep the natural ecosystem intact and without them, the natural ecosystem could collapse. So Arctic foxes can be considered um, a keystone species because um, they help to keep, keep prey populations. And in the Arctic, that would be lemmings um, under control. Okay. The other really interesting role that they play is they help to disperse um, seeds around their habitat. You know, I mentioned that they like to eat blueberries. So when they eat blueberries, they help to disperse those blueberries around. Um, 
the other role that they play is they also can be con considered an, an indicator species. So that meaning that they would indicate when a species, when a ecosystem is, is healthy. So we talked about the swift fox um, and the prairie grassland habitat that they live in. So, you know, the presence of those swift fox really does indicate when uh, it's a healthy prairie grassland habitat. So they're monitored in a lot of areas in Canada um, to make sure, you know, that we see any, any disruptions to, to um, the populations, because um, that in turn can tell us about the, the ecosystem as well. Awesome. So every species has a role. Uh, it seems like it's always a question, but every, every species does. Absolutely. Uh, so I think I've put you on the spot enough with the questions for one day. So I'm going to wrap up my questions, um, but I am going to ask you to do a quick round of fox facts, which is a very <laughs> terrible tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have a ton of fun. Uh, oh my gosh, now I'm stuck on the tongue twister. <laughs> I have a ton of favorite fox facts as well. Um, so I'll just try and keep it to, to five fun facts about foxes. Uh, the first one that I think is really, really neat is that foxes, I'm sure you've noticed in those, those images and, and video, they have this beautiful, huge, fluffy tail. Mm -hmm. um, and those tails are really important, especially for the Arctic fox, where they live in, in a very extreme cold environments. They actually use their tail as blankets and they wrap, wrap their tail around them to keep them warm, uh, especially when they're sleeping or when they go into winter dormancy periods. Um, it helps them, helps them to stay alive. Uh, their tails also can be used for, for communication purposes, just like your dog, again, would use its tail to, to signal things um, and also for balance as it's, as it's running and hunting. Okay, that's my first fact. Next fact, uh, I mentioned too that gray foxes can be seen in trees. Um, they're the only fox species able to climb trees and that's because they have semi-retractable claws. Um, so that actually makes them a bit more like a cat because cats can fully retract their claws, but gray foxes have these semi-retractable ones. So I wasn't totally off base. You weren't totally <laughs> off base. No, not at all. <laughs> Um, the other cool thing about foxes is they have absolutely fantastic hearing. Um, they use that hearing for hunting and, and to find food. So um, red foxes can hear a mouse squeak from over 30 meters away. So oh. it's pretty incredible to watch them hunt because they rely so much on, on their ears to help them. Speaking of ears, um, foxes also produce an incredible variety of sounds. Um, there's a, over 40 of them have been documented. And uh, there's one in particular that, you know, sometimes biologists or, or people who are out in the woods at night describe hearing a sound that sounds like a woman screaming in the night. Oh, that no. might be a red fox if you hear that <laughs> in the nighttime. <laughs> they have, um, they actually have a um, pretty scary shriek or scream that that has been described like a woman screaming. So keep your, keep your ears open for that if you're out. Um, and then the last one that I wanted to share is that um, a male fox is actually called a dog fox and a female is called a vixen. Cool. Well, those are some pretty cool facts. <laughs> um, I was going to say fox facts and then I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> screw that up. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, just a reminder to anyone watching that if you have any questions for Emily or myself, but probably Emily, uh, feel free to put them in the chat and we can answer them at any time. But for now, why don't we move on to our trivia? It's kind of the fun part of the episode where we get to quiz you and see what information you took in from today's episode. So I know there might've been distractions from the adorable photos, but uh, hopefully some knowledge was gained. So yes. let's get that started. Great idea. All right, question number one. What is the smallest Canadian fox? So feel free to type your answer into the comments. Yeah, we'll see We'll see how closely everyone was paying attention, but um, I think I mentioned this one at, at least once. I might've mentioned it a couple of times, but there is a very, very small fox species that I said was as small as a house cat. Um, so maybe that's a, a, a good clue for you as to which one that is. I have someone typed in a gray fox. 
Okay, that's a good, mm. good, good guess. Someone else has guessed Swift. Yeah. Okay, so the answer is yes, Swift Fox. It's it's very very small, only two or three kilograms, and uh, again, about the size of a cat. So great job, guys. <laughs> Yeah, and then again, the biggest, the... yeah, the biggest one is the red fox on the other end of the spectrum there. All right, question number two. Red foxes can be found everywhere in Canada except where? Okay, so this one again, I think we mentioned a couple of times where red foxes are found. I did mention as again a bit of a a bit of a clue um, that they are generalists. They're very adaptable. They can be found in a wide variety of places. Um, but there are a couple of places where they haven't yet been found. Potentially in the future they'll be there, but they're not there yet. So anyone and we can get know those. they're in New Brunswick because I <laughs> yeah. said that like ten times. <laughs> and we know they're in Toronto too for folks that live there. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a, a few islands off the coast of BC where they, they're not found, as well as the, the high Arctic. Um, but we've got the, the Arctic fox, of course, up there. So still foxes up there, just not, uh, not the red fox. All right. Great job to everybody who got that one. Third question. Feel free to type your answer into the comments. How fast can a swift fox run? Okay, I don't know how to give hints here without just giving the the exact answer away. <laughs> um, but I mean, the the answer is sort of in the, the name of that fox in that the name is a swift fox. So you know it's gotta be pretty fast. So I know that I certainly can't run this fast. I don't think you can either, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know, I'm pretty speedy. <laughs> Okay, great. I see we've got a couple of folks have put in 60 kilometers per hour. Carrie Ann, Emily, and Naomi have all got it right. It's 60 kilometers an hour, which is pretty darn fast. Yeah, I may not be at 60 kilometers per hour. <laughs> You'll just have to keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a race. All right, last question, everyone. The question is, what do foxes use their tail for? Okay, so there's there's a few things actually that, that they use their tail for. Um, so yeah, bonus points if you get all of them, but if you just know <laughs> one of them, then of course that would be, be great if you, you submit that. I talked specifically about it um, and how important the tail is for the Arctic fox who lives up in the, the cold, harsh environment. Um, but they all use all use their tails for the same purpose. So we'll see if anyone was listening and, and got any of those those uses. Okay, so the uh, yeah, as, as Catherine said, they use it as a blanket, they need it for warmth. Um, they also use it for balance as they're they're running and hunting and for for communication, just like, like we see our dogs do. Um, you know, the, the tail can tell tell you a lot about what the fox is is thinking and feeling. So it's awesome. pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. Well, good work, everyone. Um, I just checked the comment section and it doesn't seem like there's any questions for today. So I think we can actually wrap up our Wildlife Wednesday Fox episode, but just one more thing before I send everyone away. Um, WWF Canada has officially launched its Run to Restore Nature. Also, a lot of alliteration going on. <laughs> Tongue twisters everywhere. Um, but that is actually happening in May, and there's a five-kilometer swift fox run, uh, which I would encourage you to sign up for. I myself am attempting the Great Caribou Migration, which is the half marathon um, oh, that wow. you can walk, run, wheel, skip your way uh, through, and we'd love to have you sign up. So you can see if you're as swift as a swift fox. <laughs> Great idea. See if you can run 60 kilometers an hour. <laughs> I'm going to keep that as a goal, I think. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for tuning into our Wildlife Wednesday. And as a reminder, Wildlife Wednesdays are held on the last Wednesday of every month. 
And as I'm saying that, I'm realizing it's March. And <laughs> we switched it around them. this month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern. So please join us again uh, for our next Wildlife Wednesday sometime soon. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.